have a nice brief meeting for you today, a little quick marketing meeting with some very concise information. And as we go forward, of course, we'll uh, have some final thoughts of, about the subject matter as we get towards the end of it. And Jessica will jump in and then we'll open up the floor to the Q&A as we always do. Um, just wanna welcome you all. Uh, we do enjoy doing these, these uh, marketing cafes. They're a quick way for you, the art photographer, and for us to stay connected to our audience beyond our family fan, fans and friends and try to reach a little bit further out beyond uh, what it is that we're doing with our art photography, get people more familiar with who we are and what it is that we have to offer in our art, which is a wonderful thing that we do. So today's subject is email marketing strategy for the holiday season. A uh, very simple subject, you may think, but uh, we're going to drill down a little bit as we go, go forward. So again, I'm Joanne. I'm one of the founders with Photo Art Pavilion. My business partner, Jessica, is also on the meeting today, and she'll come in a little bit later as uh, we, we get towards the end of the subject matter. But Jessica and I have been working together since 2007. We launched Photo Art Pavilion in 2018 right before the pandemic, which was uh, kind of serendipitous, but uh, it worked out great for us because we transitioned from a physical gallery space to this online platform that we, we manage and run, the Photo Art Pavilion platform, where we help our photographers grow and expand their uh, art sales and their visibility of their art. So we really enjoy doing that on a day-to-day -day basis. So today's uh, this month's meeting is email marketing strategy for the holiday season. I'm looking to help you move uh, your email marketing strategy forward for the upcoming holiday season. As an art photographer, direct email, as we know, I've always talked to you about this month to month, how important email is, and it's a great way to um, communicate with your audience and to build excitement around your art. It also, in a very nice way, helps drive sales. So that's always the goal in what it is that we do. So I'm gonna to put together a little bit of a step-by-step -step plan on how to get these emails scheduled going out every three weeks. So here we are, the second to last week in September, and we're looking to build a email strategy going through the end of 2024. Can't believe we're even talking about the end of 2024 already, but here, here goes. So let's talk about step number one. Step number one is going to be planning your content calendar. So I have three screens for this. We're going to break your email blasts, if you will, down, uh, drill down into six different uh, emails that are going to go out over these next months. So the first, the last week of the September, what we're going to do is send out an email blast that's going to reintroduce yourself and or your best collections, or you're going to throw a, a holiday tease, a, a collection tease in that email. You might also have some exclusive holiday pieces that you're pre-showing um, your audience at, that, at this time. So when we get to the last week of September, which is actually next week, we're going to be just giving a little bit of a um, introduction to our audience, a reintroduction. It's probably been a while. The summer months were just here. Uh, everybody kind of goes into a dormant stage when it comes to marketing a little bit. We might do some craft fairs or, so, or some, some uh, gallery showings, but now how are, we, how are we reaching out on the email side? The email side, this is a great way to just reintroduce. Hi, I'm here. Uh, let, me, let me reintroduce myself to you. Three weeks after that, we get around mid-October. At this point, we want to spotlight a featured piece with a story behind it. Could be anything in your collection. And you all have really fabulous collections. I've seen them. So pick one piece and put a story behind it, almost like writing a blog, and put that into an email and get that going out as well. You can also feature other best-selling or holiday-themed prints. So you may want to divide your email into two sections, the featured piece up on top, and then on the bottom, a little precursor towards the holiday season coming up, a little bit of um, best-sellers, uh, uh, early Christmas shopping or holiday shopping, however you want to phrase that, and bring that into your mid-October email blast. 
when we get to the middle part of this uh, this campaign, the third email going out is going to be the first week of November. And here we're going to offer early holiday shopping deals or holiday sales promotions, early bird discounts. At this point, within your storefront or wherever it is that you're doing your um, your your marketing or wherever you're you're creating your coupons and your sales, we want to have those sales set up already, uh, whatever the coupon code might be. And you want to start offering these deals going forward in that for in that first week of November, early bird shopping. Uh, you know, time to time to you know, you click off, uh, check off who's on your holiday list, and then offer some of those uh, so those big bold discounts, whether it be fifteen percent, twenty percent, twenty five percent. Bring those into the into the email, and again, do it in a very user friendly, happy, cheerful way. We're not looking to oversell our email. Uh, um, audience, what we are looking to do is just give them the offer. Okay. And then the last week of November, we're going to highlight limited edition prints or other exclusive offers that you may, you may have, or you may create. You also can talk to uh, the audience at this point about gift ideas, such as, uh, and the free shipping that we offer through Photo Art Pavilion, or even gift card options that, that we can offer them. So, the, the month of November is really the month where we're going to start squeezing the audience a little bit into thinking. We're going, to, we're going to train their brains a little bit into thinking about the holiday season and the shopping that they have in front of them. And art prints are a really, really wonderful way to, to, to give a gift that's extremely unique. And with all the art that we have available through all of our, our artists on Photo Art Pavilion and you on your own, I am certain that you have art pieces that speak to your audience because we typically, in our audience of family, friends, and fans, have people that have are like-minded in the way we see art. Some of us might be very avant-garde, others might be very traditional in the, in the way that, that we create art, but our audiences are typically within the same mindset of what we are doing with our art. So think about that when you're going forward. As we get into the final part of our uh, content calendar, now we're into early slash mid-December. Now we wanna be talking to them in this email about last minute gift ideas and any rush shipping deadlines that might be approaching. Uh, this is critical because uh, we as artists want to make sure that whatever art someone is buying as a gift is in the hands of that person for the holiday season, for that gift to be unwrapped. So shipping deadlines, you can even start talking about shipping deadlines if you'd like in the month of November, that's fine. But uh, this is in mid-December, another last minute gift ideas. You might have certain pieces that might speak to uh, the holidays, maybe pieces that are red or um, cardinals or, or uh, beautiful winter scenes, things of that nature. Or you might just have some beautiful sunset imagery that, um, that evokes uh, an emotion with your audience. So just think about those last minute gift ideas that you can sort of point your audience into clicking and buying, click and buy. That's what we wanna get to. And then as we get to late December, the holidays are finished, if you will. It's early January. Now it's time for that post-holiday thank you and to continue to stay connected with that audience. We also want to talk to them about any new collections that you might be uh, thinking about creating in the new year, or what your plans are for the new year with your photography. So these are all very open and easy subject matter that you can, can craft and put together for your audience. And I don't want you to overthink what you're doing in your, um, in your, uh, your content for your emails. Keep it light keep it easy and keep it relevant to what it is that you're looking to connect with, with your audience. So now we have those six um, emails, uh, time slots that we would like emails to go out. Okay, let me just go back real quick. Okay, we're talking about last week of September, mid-October, first week of November, last week of November, mid early to mid December and then late December early January so we've got six target weeks where we want emails to go out the next step now that we've targeted that 
is to design the email templates. We want you to design those six email templates now, right now, because when we design those templates in advance, dropping the content in becomes less time consuming. You're not waiting to the end. So if you're using a service like Constant Contact, MailChimp, Active Campaign, whatever it is that you're using, you can simply go in right now and put the skeleton together for each of those six weeks based on those, those uh, time slots that I just laid out for you. You can have them created. They don't have to go anywhere, but they're sitting there already designed and, and ready for you to fill content into them. You're going to make each template visually stunning with the look and feel for the season or for the time period for when it's going out. So when the last week of September email is going out, we don't really want to have um, winter scenes and um, uh, snow, uh, snow scenes and things like that. We might want to have something that speaks more to the season of fall. Okay, so just think about the, the timing. So each of those templates that are going to go out can each have a different feel to it, a different color palette, however you want to, to think about it in your own terms. Make them stunning, make them beautiful. Make them, make, make them feel the season that they're in. That's why I say September and October might be a different feel than emails that are going out in November and December. Make sure you can design this ahead of time and possibly use the same header and footer for each of the emails going out if you want to save a little time, but you want to have a header and you want to have a footer for your emails and you want to include in those two items, your branding, your name, your logo, your headshot, your contact information, your social media contact links, whatever else that you can put in there so that keeps the audience connected to you. They're going to click over to, let's say an image that you have within the body of the, of the template of the email. Terrific. That's wonderful. They're connecting with you. But now they're going to see an email from you in, in another three weeks and another three weeks and another three weeks. Let's give them some continuity to your design, to your, um, to who you are as an artist, to your brand. Okay. That's very important. And we would love for you as well to have a strong focus, obviously, on your photography, because that's what it is that you're directing your audience to do, to look at your photography, to purchase your photography. Embedding direct links into your art pieces, behind your art pieces, as often as possible. I even like when I send out emails to have direct links buried over, uh, underneath certain texts, like certain parts of my commentary within my emails. Um, there are words there or phrases there that are a strong uh, opportunity for me to bury a link behind them. So if somebody sees that phrase, they'll click on it and they'll also jump to something else that I'm looking for them to look at. Now, again, I, you can have people, uh, your audience go to a single art piece. You can have them go to an entire portfolio or an entire genre of your portfolio. Let's say you'd like to have them go shop all your abstract work or all of your landscape work or all of your street photography work, whatever it is that you're looking to direct them to, you could do that and as well as have them go specifically to one, two, three, or four different pieces. Like sometimes I like to have my emails laid out where I have a grid of let's say four pieces uh, side by side in the grid, then some commentary, then some, you know, within the commentary, some more hot links, and then some additional information. Maybe I have an upcoming workshop that I'm doing. I like to announce that to my audience as well and get them to link over to that and see if I can, if I can sell a workshop. So for me, I, my, uh, email, my emails that go out are multifaceted, but this time of year, primarily, it's all about creating the, the opportunity to sell some art. So we've designed the email templates. We know we have six uh, different weeks that these emails are going to go out. Now we have to plop the copy in there the engaging copy. So each email should be telling a different story, right? Based on the delivery date of that email, something going out in September versus something going out in December is obviously going to have a different uh, commentary, different language, different feel. Make your copy personal in nature. When you send out these emails, a lot of these uh, softwares like MailChimp, Constant Talk, Contact, you can personalize. It could be Dear Mary, as opposed to Hey, big difference, right? When you see those types of emails coming in. 
Correlate the text with high quality images of your artwork, important. Show, showcase different aspects of your work. As I mentioned, whether it be abstract, landscape, street photography, whatever it is, black and white, bring them to what it is that you want them to look at. And I, I threw this in here. Don't be shy about discussing your, your digital production process. Um, believe it or not, a lot of people find that very fascinating when they're learning about you and your art, okay? It's not just about making that purchase, but they want to connect with you uh, personally on a heart-to-heart -heart level. And I think that discussing the way you go about creating your art is an important aspect of that. Um, most people believe that they're photographers because they walk around with a camera, quote unquote, mobile device in their hands. Let us, let us separate ourselves from those people. I'm not saying that photography coming off of a, of a mobile device is, is uh, inferior, but certainly once we get that image, what's the first thing we do when we take something with a mobile device, take an image with a mobile device? We go into the filters and we're playing around, but we also do the same thing as artists, as art photographers with our DSLRs. We go into Photoshop and um, Lightroom and so forth, and we play around uh, to make enhancements to those imageries. Talk about it in your emails. Okay, a clear call to action, always important. Have those click-throughs uh, as we get into probably November, you may wanna have a button that's, that just says, you know, 25% limited time sale or this week only, you know, put those deadlines on those sales and have that button that clicks directly over to your entire gallery or to a specific gallery that you want them to see. Right, so be clear with your call to actions. Have buttons in your emails. Have imagery, obviously, some commentary, obviously. Have a button here or there that says shop now, 25% um, off, click here, that type of stuff. Those are call to actions that you want them to jump on. And put in there, so I have here, deliver hol holiday inspiration and cheer along the way. Be cheerful, be happy, be, um, I don't know, just be cheerful. Wishing everyone a happy holiday season. Making sure that they're, um, they're smiling when you read, when they read your emails. Make sure you're smiling when you write your emails because that, believe it or not, translates into very happy content and that's what we want. And of course, highlight your best sellers. All right, so now we've done it. We created the templates. We plopped in our content and our commentary. We have those emails sitting, ready to go, six different ones sitting, to, sitting and ready to go in our um, email service. And now all we have to do is go in and check for formatting. So we're gonna send a test email to ourselves with each of them, make sure that the links and the formatting and the subject lines, all of that stuff is in order. It looks good when it comes into your inbox, okay? And then what we're going to do is we're gonna schedule them one by one to go out every three weeks, simple. And once this is all done, you can then remain focused on your other marketing tasks that, that go along while your emails are automatically going out every three weeks. You did the work now, and now it's done. It's finished. You don't have to think about anything else till we get to the end of the year. Everything else that you could do could be related to your local market, what you're doing in your local community, could be relate, related to your social media platforms, could be related to door to door, could be related to picking up the phone and talking to people that you've done business with in the past. And they're looking at, hey, how are you? Happy holidays. Um, you know, I'm still here. Introduce, reintroduce yourself in a different way. So we've got the email side covered. If you work on this next week, this week into next week, and you get this done, put your head down and get this done. This is homework. <laughs> put your head down, get this done. You'll be very happy because as the holiday season comes along, uh, you're going to be you're going to have hands free with a lot of other things that you're going to be going to be able to do. Okay. Final step in the process: analyze and optimize. So the first week in uh, the first email that's going to go out is the end of September. And once those emails go out within your Mailchimp constant contact, active campaign, whatever service you're using, you're able to go in and click the data points, the metrics, 
where you can see the open rates. You can even see where in a specific email, the person who opened your email clicked. Did they click on words? Did they click on images? Did they click on your banner? Did they click on your face? You know, what did they click on? Those are important metrics to know as you move your campaigns forward, because now you have, you have six campaigns, you sent out one, you're starting to get some metrics. Terrific. Now you could look at your five campaigns in front of that one and see if there's anything there that you need to tweak based on what you sent out the first, the first week. Okay. So you want to see what it is that your audience is looking at, focusing on and see if you could bring that forward so that you get better and better and better at your at your interaction okay don't forget time sensitive offers countdowns to um, shipping deadlines and things like that any personal messages any behind the scenes stories and things like that so if you feel your campaigns are are running flat these are things that you can add in that might spark a little bit more activity and you of course want to maintain consistent communication with your audience. It's so important. So keep your campaigns organized and keep them on schedule. So that's, that's the best way to go about this entire process. So I'm gonna take a break. I'm gonna breathe a little bit here. I'm going to um, give my business partner, Jessica, an opportunity to introduce herself and add some final thoughts into our meeting today. Perfect. Thank you so much, Joanne. That was fantastic. Hi, everyone. I'm Jessica Lempin. And um, for those of you who don't know me, but um, oh my goodness, Joanne, this is fantastic. So, you know, everyone's kind of transitioning into the idea of full and stuff, but as business owners, you kind of have to always think ahead. And this J and J marketing cafe is fantastic. If you do the homework, <laughs> um, cause in let's say a weekend's time or within a week's time, if you take these steps that Joanne went through and start cultivating your next six weeks of marketing, especially your email marketing, it's going to make everything else just work a little bit smoother for you. Um, in the fact that you can also take the information that you're using in the email and then um, set it up through any social media that you're doing and have the same kind of messages going through. But I did want to also say there are maybe two types of art buyers and, you know, from now until the, um, the end of the year. So you have people, perhaps October, November, um, who could be thinking about the gift opportunities, but they could also be looking to enhance their home for the holiday crowd. You know, they, everyone's trying to show off for the next person that's coming to their house. What changes did you do? Oh, I love this. I love that. They want to improve their space for the company. So that's also a mindset that you can cultivate an email to maybe your first email. It's talking about, oh, the holidays are coming. Are we ready? You know, here's a great collection of art that might work to enhance a certain type of room or, or so on. Um, but, you know, then you also have, you know, the people that are looking to do their home, maybe it's an office, a commercial space, you never know um, who you have contacts with that have other friends that say, hey, I'm looking to do X, Y, Z, do you know anybody? So you always wanna put those kind of ideas out there. And I think email is great, even if it's a little line at the bottom, whatever it is, however you're cultivating your content. Um, I just wanna give you that other perspective um, for an art buyer. And then the it's other funny, thing, it's funny you say that because I'm thinking about what's the first email I'm going to send out at the end of September. And I'm already thinking exactly that time, yeah. to up your, time to spruce up your walls. It's cheaper than home improvements. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I'm sorry. To interrupt uh, yeah, no, no, it's good. And then the other thing too. So as Joanne was talking about with the different promotions and so on, you know, you could also just Google, um, emails or like the sales link though, and look what the big guys are doing, or even check your own inbox for the big box stores. What are they talking about? How are they marketing? Grab some of their ideas and convert, convert it into your own style. But really the thing is let's start creating those templates, start thinking about your content and really what it is that you're looking to do. And then everything just kind of starts to fall in place because you're starting to develop your plan. 
And that's really what it is. It's really getting your homework done so that you have an easier transition for the holiday season and really looking to, you know, create your goals. You know, what are your goals for the upcoming couple of months? Um, you know, and, and what steps are you doing to make them happen? So this is a great um, J and J as far as step one for the holiday season with email marketing. But oh my goodness, Joanne, thank you so much for putting all of this together and really getting the ball rolling in this vein of marketing. Yeah, I think I think it's um it's 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 an easy I personally feel if there, if we have to create each of us six templates, if you were to say I'm going to designate 30 minutes per template, that's three hours of your life that will probably yield you some sales and some um, additional exposure to you and your art. And I think, you know, three hours of your life is, is so much worth it because um, that's what we're all here for. I mean, we're, we love to create art, um, but we also love it even more when other people acknowledge our art, whether it's even just a response to an email that your art is beautiful or whatever. I mean, yeah, we all want to have those sales. There's no doubt about it. And the sales will, the better opportunity for sales is when you put some of your time and effort behind bringing what you have to offer to an audience that's already out there. You have social media platforms, you have uh, email, um, email lists, uh, you can grow your email lists every day. People that interact with you on social media, um, feel free to reach out to them. And, you know, if you have somebody that keeps liking all of your work or all of your posts on social media, private message them and say, hey, listen, I see that you, you uh, follow me. Would it be all right if I add you to my email list? My email, I have some special offers that would be only exclusive to uh, people on my email list. Do what you can to grow your email list and then put, put this plan into action. I don't even mind if you have five people on your email list. Eventually, it will continue to grow, but you need to get in the habit of doing this type of work. And that's, that's really, uh, really it. Yes. All right. I do want to have one more thing. I'm sorry. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> so I also wanted to just come back to the idea of the, your content. So um, the art of storytelling is huge. So you don't have to be overly sal salesy like Joanne was talking about. Create um, an email perhaps based on a location. Why is it your favorite? What What is it about this land that you love so much? And, you know, start doing storytelling where you talk about something that you're connecting with or talk about, um, you know, maybe you grew up in this area, whatever it is. And then at the bottom of that, you could just say, hey, you know, you view more work. And by the way, I'm running a sale. You know, it doesn't have to be overly um, um, commercialized as far as that art sale. You can actually connect with them through the visual of your art, the story behind it. And oh, by the way, it makes it a little bit more personal and it makes it into a little bit more of a ability for those art buyers or potential art buyers to connect with you and that moment that you're trying to bring them over into your store. So don't forget about that, the art of storytelling. <laughs> yeah, terrific. Uh, thank you, Jess, that was terrific. Uh, and I, again, thanks everybody for being with us. Um, it, it's always great having an audience uh, that we can talk with. And it seems like month after month, our audience is growing. It's a wonderful thing, um, which means that uh, I believe that we're delivering something valuable to all of you. We really appreciate um, you guys stopping in and spending some time with us uh, as we, Joanne and Jessica, we try each month to come up with something exciting for you so that you can sink your teeth into getting your marketing, your photo art marketing uh, in order month after month. So thanks a lot, everybody. Really, really appreciate it.